Hi everyone, this is CY once again. Thanks for joining my channel. Um, today's setting is slightly different. I'm actually at the uh, my cafe, the meat section where we do like uh, R and D of uh, roasted coffee beans, and uh, we typically use this machine to actually try different profile of the bean that we've just roasted. And uh, today's uh, I'm going to talk about my user experience after using the the DS V for some time. Um, I would like to talk about some quirks and some recommendations for using the grinders and uh, what's the good thing and what's the bad thing about the grinder after using for uh, about a week, right? So this is uh, the main thing about the uh, video for today. Right, first of all, uh, again, I have to um, commend the effort in making this grinder very premium. And um, okay, so um, grinder finishing is really good and uh, I love the magnetic design of the uh, exit chute which is det detachable for cleaning right um, uh, the, it can actually comes with a tiny brush whereby you can actually brush the coffee and uh, okay so now I will talk about the things I don't really like about this grinder right first of all um, this dosing cup right this dosing cup is not the standard 50mm size so it makes um, the transfer of coffee it's not a very big deal but it, it is it, it, if you try to transfer the coffee into the 58 mm size of photo filter right then the cup actually goes into it and um yeah you actually leave a ring and then you have to tap it and then um before you tamp it or distribute it yeah, so that's one downside uh, i would appreciate if they, let's say they can actually um, re, um probably change this to something with a standard 50mm size number two right um, it's about this uh, bellow right this bellow um, it is attached very loosely right to the anti-popcorn uh, features that's attached to this grinder so you can see um, if most of the time I'll, it's very easy uh, to accidentally hit it and then it just drop off right so um, this is something which they, they can increase the tolerance a little bit more so that this will be um, more tight fitting and it doesn't drop out as often right very often uh, when I accidentally hit it you know um, when I want to remove this uh, cover for the bellow right it will just drop out so this is a second thing which I don't like about this grinder right um, another the third thing is you probably will need uh, oh the third thing is actually doesn't come with a it doesn't come with a you know polar filter holder which means to say that the only option you have is either you those are ready to the cup and then transfer or you have to hold your polar filter there or uh, maybe you can rest your polar filter on the existing stand then you can actually dose it but you still need to hold it one hand right you cannot leave it there and do something else and you come back and retrieve your grind right so there's something that uh, maybe they can improve upon um, I'm not too sure and because this is magnetized so you can't really leave this and hope that it will hold this in place uh, it, it, it just doesn't hold in place right so this is the another thing which i find that um, maybe without the uh, fork to hold your portal filter the entire grinder looks a lot more, a lot slicker but um, in terms of the usability functions uh, some of us just like to dose directly into the portal filter right and you don't have the options too so that's the third thing which i don't like about this grinder and uh, number four Right, it's about um, ah number four is about the dosing cup, which I mentioned just now. Uh, you you probably one dosing cup is not enough. You need two of them, or you need at least some sort of a container to contain your coffee beans, and another one to grind your coffee into. Why why do I say that? Because this grinder is run on a brushless motor, which means the motor RPM, even though uh, is adjustable, but a lot of times the um, the motor is weaker than the uh, original DF64 version, which means to say that if you you allow the grinder to be in the off position and you pour beans inside and you switch on the grinder to grind, very often the in initial grinding will, uh, of the grinder there will be uh, some stalling. And in some occasion, if you use like light roasted bean, the bean can actually get uh, stuck and the, the you know it will jam the burr and the burr just doesn't move. So to use this grinder effectively, you have to turn on the grinder, drop the beans inside, and then you need another bean um, sort of a container to actually catch the ground. So technically, you need two of them. 
So maybe that's the idea whereby they give you this, which is a non-standard 58. It's for you to dose the beans inside and you get yourself another 50mm portafilter as a container so that you can transfer to your portafilter nicely, right? So probably you need to buy an extra um, dosing cup, 50mm size, uh, preferably if you're using a E61 group kind of machine, right? So that will be ideal. So that will be the four quirks I find in this grinder. Uh, which I, I I think if they improve all this thing, uh, it will be uh, almost to the near perfect kind of grinder, right? So, uh, okay, now let's move on to something I really like about the grinder. First of all, the retention. The retention on this grinder without bellow is about 0.3 gram, which is quite good in my opinion for any uh, flatbed grinder. So uh, you can choose not to bellow, just overdose a little bit. Uh, maybe if you are looking for 18 grams, you can dose about 18.3 gram, and then uh, once 18 gram comes out, right, remove your cup, place the cup that you want to dispose the remaining ground that you want to battle out. Uh, that would be an ideal situation. All right. Secondly, um, I'm not too sure whether this is intended in design. Uh, this seems to be uh, acting as a knocker, right? If you realize that there's a bit of slack in the design of the magnetic chute, so you can actually uh, flick the magnetic chute as a knocker So a lot of times there will be coffee ground that's stuck on the exit chute You can knock it And then uh, the ground that's actually stuck on the chute will actually be dropped out into the uh, dosing cup So that's another nice feature Which I am not too sure whether it's intended If it's intended, that means it's well designed If it's not intended, then it's a bonus uh, features that just happen to be there, right? So that's the second thing I like about this grinder. Of course, the third thing I like about this grinder is the variable RPM. Um, I'll be testing whether the variable RPM actually affect the tasting notes of both the espresso, also uh, for the uh, filter coffee. I think it will probably matter more if uh, we are doing filter coffee. Uh, but the tasting, we have to test it and then verify in the future video, right? And uh, another thing about the um, Burr alignment, right, which I'll, I'll talk about in the future, but the collar spring kind of uh, um, spring system for the DF64V version is actually more stable than the three spring version as compared to the DF64 stock version, right? So that's another thing that I find that is good, right? So, and um, the collar is no longer using it for the grind adjustment, which means it saves the trouble of actually. Uh, it prevents the uh, sort of uh, um, problem of uh, cross uh, cross treading in the previous uh, DF64 version, whereby the main body is actually aluminium, the collar is also aluminium, which make it a uh, uh, very kind of soft material. And if you are not careful with the uh, when you lock up your you know your external collar, uh, many a times I see customer cross treading, and then you have to destroy the top collar in order to um, sort of uh, save the grinder. But so this grinder doesn't have that issue. Because now the grind adjustment is actually um, on the center, on the on the collar, on the center center cylinder here, right? Oh, one more downside, which I can this can be improved, right? Uh, by simply putting on a rubber band, sort of a friendship band kind of material over here, like you know uh, our manual hand grinder, the Commandante has this kind of a silicone ring whereby you can put here, and it'll be easier for you to do the uh, grind adjustment. Because at the moment this is really very smooth, right? It is. If your hand is dry, uh, it is sometimes it is really hard for you to do the uh, adjustment of the grind setting, right? So that's another downside which I think uh, the DF64V can improve upon, which is actually to provide sort of a rough out ring here, right? They can make this, you know, sort of a, um, some pattern which make it rougher here for you to do the grind adjustment. That will be ideal, right? Other than that, um, the grinding of this. Uh, the grinding of coffee on this is great. The noise can be a little bit high pitch uh, when you grind at higher RPM. At lower RPM, if you grind it, um, if you don't start the grinder and point the beans, the, the beans tends to get jammed and the, the burr tend to stop and then um, uh, it, it just uh, frustrates you, right? So my recommendation is to drop the bean, uh, switch on the power first and you drop in the beans and you grind. So, um, so far, the grind has been pretty consistent. The espresso coming out from the uh, uh, DF64V, uh, of course, I'm using this machine uh, today to pull the espresso, has been quite good consistently. 
right? So, so far the grinding uh, has been very pleasant and uh, without further ado, let's try to make some coffee, right? You have heard of me talking enough for today. So uh, let's move on to making maybe an espresso and then a milk based drink. Then we go and taste the coffee. Alright, so for today's coffee, I'm going to use our latest um, rose development, which is the Costa Rica uh, natural processed beans from Las Lajas. I, ho I hope I have pronounced the region correctly. Right, the tasting note of this bean is actually white peach, red plums, raw sugar, and mango skin. Um, by looking at the tasting note, it really sounds really delicious. So um, currently, my grinder setting is at uh, 16. Right, I'm going to grind. Um, Maybe slightly finer to 15, right? You can see I I have to use two hands because this is really smooth, and I'm going to use this uh, the dosing cup that comes with it as a way to measure my beans. Uh, I'm going to use this. I'm not going to use this to uh, to collect the coffee ground. But right, I'm just going to dose 18 grams. The beans is light medium roast. Right, 18 gram is like 18.2 gram, right? So I'll sh let you see the rose level of the beans. Right, these are light to mid, um, more towards the medium, but uh, I would say it's in between light to medium. Right, so measure again, 18.3 gram. So remember, always switch on your grinder. Right, the RPM now is a 1000, just keep it at 1000. I'll just bellow to make sure all the coffee is out. Right, so 18.3, I'm going to zero out the uh, dosing cup so that I will count, uh, I can actually uh, account for the output of the coffee. So remember the grind, see, this is the part whereby I don't like it. So I will just remove this entirely and see whether you actually uh, uh, have any anti popcorn, whether the beans will jump out. Right, so you can see the grinding has stopped. Okay, I will not do any bellowing first. Let's let me measure the beans output and see what is the output of the coffee. Right, eighteen point zero exactly. So as what I've mentioned just now, you actually retain about 0.3 grams of coffee. And this is when I'll put the uh, original dosing cup, put on the bellow, turn on the grinder, and then I'll bellow out everything. Right, so this will be the remaining coffee that is stuck inside there for about three grams. Right. So perfect. So I dose 18.3 grams in and I'm getting 80 grams out. So that's perfect. So right now, let me move over to the espresso machine that I'm using for today. Which is this guy over here. Um, by the way, this, is, uh, this has been featured in my video before. Right? It's actually a pressure profiling cover machine. Um, something similar in terms of design, in terms of the way that you pull shots. Um, it's manual. You can you can either set it to manual or you can actually memorize the profile and then replay it the next time. So there's a screen here, right? I'm just gonna go go full manual, right? So you can see a graph appearing there. Okay, not too sure whether you can see it. So let me bring my camera closer. Right. So you can see there's a screen there. Alright, so let's do some coffee preparation. Alright, just transfer over to the portal filter. Alright, the coffee ground is not too bad. There's a little bit of clump. Alright, I'm just going to tamp it down directly and then I'm just going to pull the shots. Alright, I'm going to show you how the shot is. Right, so how this machine works is very simple. To start the machine, uh, you can actually aim for the pressure first. Right now, I want to start brewing at two bars of pressure. Right, let me bring you closer to see that. Okay, so I will show you. I can actually turn this knob here. You can see the bar pressure reducing. Right, uh, I can reduce it to zero. Right now, I want to start extracting at about two bar. Right, press and press to start. I'll let it pre-infuse for 5 seconds and run it about to 6 bar of pressure. 
Okay, now I'll go nine bar. Espresso is coming out nicely. Right, then I'll reduce it. And I'll stop it. Right, I'm extracting about 60, uh, let me see, 30 point, 31 grams of coffee, which is slightly short. Uh, and the extraction time is 38 seconds. So you can see I'm grinding a little bit too fine. So this coffee will probably taste a little bit over extracted because the extraction time is a bit too long and I probably have grinded the coffee too closely, uh, too, uh, too fine. But uh, anyway, let's taste the coffee and then see how's the extraction like. All right, so let's try the coffee. Cheers. Ooh, the juiciness. Wow, it's very impactful. Oh, it's slightly on the acidic side. Probably the, uh, uh, it's not over extraction, it's actually under extraction because um, I've grinded the uh, coffee to be too fine and then there's probably some channeling and causes the extraction to be a little bit uneven. I can taste uh, the juiciness, the, the sweetness, but acidity is on the higher side. But naturally, this is what I get from the Costa Rica beans. Uh, the acidity is tend to be slightly higher. Right, so let me tell you what. I will dial in another shot. I will grind it slightly coarser. Then uh, we'll try to pull the extraction again using the similar kind of profile. And then um, let's make a milk based string and then let's Call your day for today. Right, so same thing, I'm gonna dose about 18.3 gram. Right, that's exactly 18.3. Right, so I'm gonna transfer this. Right, so that I'll know what kind of output I'm getting from here. Remember to switch on your grinder. Okay, before that, let me adjust the grind to be slightly coarser, maybe around 17. Turn on the grinder. Okay, do not do any bellowing. Just let it run until to make sure that all the coffee has been grinded. Right, turn off the grinder. Let's weigh the coffee again. 18.0. So it is indeed retention. The retention of this grinder is about 0.3 gram without bellow. So make sure that you bellow out everything so that your coffee on the next one will be back to zero. Right, so the grind is still quite fluffy. There's a little bit of clump um, in some area. Right, I'm just going to straight away tamp it down. Right, this time I'm, ju I'm just going to dose that right into the cup. Right, let's transfer the coffee over. I will say the grind is uh, pretty fluffy, um, pretty consistent. Um, there's a little bit of clumping here and there, you can see, right, some clumping. Uh, if I have the WDD tools, I'll probably do one. Right, lock up the port filter. Right, uh, I will want to try to do the extractions and then steam the milk at the same time. So I really like the lever design of this um, espresso machine. Let's get the milk ready. All right, so let's play. Um, I'll probably focus on the extraction first, then I'll do the milk later because I want to focus on the uh, how this uh, how the graph is.
right so let's try let's uh, start at two bars of pressure before engaging the pump for about three seconds then i'm going to ramp up to six bar about 10 seconds i'll ramp out to nine bar of pressure and i'm monitoring the weight as it comes out because there's a weight sensing uh, uh, scale at the bottom we are reaching about 30 grams i'm gonna wrap it down let's stop it there about 25 seconds i'm getting slightly more uh, so probably i should have uh, reduced the grind size to maybe 16 instead of uh, 17 just now right right the espresso looks decent right uh, this is considered a lighter roll so uh, the amount of crema is actually acceptable okay let me bring the camera closer to show you the uh, steaming of milk Right, the milk is uh, steamer is extremely powerful. Okay, so let's uh, try. Okay, not the best, uh, but anyway, let's try the coffee. Right, so this machine is super fun to use uh, because the ability to change pressure um, on the go as you turn the dial, and then uh, ability to see the flow rate of the uh, uh, machine, and also monitoring the extraction weight at the same time. So this is really a a dream come true for all the things you need, right? Right, cheers, let's try the coffee. Mm. Wow, the acidity is still very high. Right, I can taste the milk, right? It's, it's interesting, right? Because when the acidity is high, um, it will make, uh, when, you, when you go with milk, the milk will tend to make it a little bit sweeter. But um, this Beans from Costa Rica is really uh, focusing on the juiciness and the acidity of the coffee. So probably it's better used as an espresso or a filter coffee. But nonetheless, let, I, I tried making uh, with milk. Right, Probably not many people like the uh, milk-based drink based on the high acidity of, the, of this coffee. Mm. But I, I like acidity coffee. So I, I like how, um, this kind of flavor, right, which tends to be um, the not the traditional chocolatey and nutty kind of uh, flavor. Right, so thanks for joining me today, right. This is CY once again. Thanks for um, watching my video, right. Subscribe. Remember to always, uh, if, you, if you like what I do, right, support me by clicking on the like button and then subscribe to my channels. And uh, I hope I, I can make more useful videos for everyone regard, uh, about anything about coffee, right? So it can be equipment, grinders, um, coffee, roasting, whatsoever, right? So thanks, everyone. Uh, stay safe. I'll see you very soon.